this afternoon, I'm leaving with my younger daughter, Lowell. We're going to Branson. I have a very, very urgent <coughs> appointment there. I'm going to fish with Branson. <laughs> the, uh, the study today is a bit different. The fact that the a subject that's not often talked about, at least not in any depth. So today I'm going to delve into something uh, about which I've been studying for and reading for several years. It's captured my interest, it certainly has held my attention. Much of it is from Paul Bilheimer's book, Destiny for the Throne, and uh, some other books and resources from which I've been reading. It's not something that I can talk about off the top of my head extemporaneously, uh, so I trust that you all understand when I stick fairly close to my notes here. The subject is the church, destined for the throne. And there are three points in this, in this study today. The first one is Calvary is the center. Contrary to what some historians believe, Calvary is the center of history. The second point is that the church is the goal and the object of history. And the third point of emphasis is simply this, the price that Jesus paid for the church. The first point is Calvary, is indeed the very center of history. The Greeks considered history to be a circle or, or a cycle, always repeating itself and therefore going nowhere in particular, accomplishing no discernible purpose and without any identifiable goals. For to them, ex uh, uh, existence was an impenetrable mystery, and this is the philosophy that embraced and expounded most, by most modern uh, secular historians. They do not want, know what existence is all about. To them, and to much of the world at large, history is merely one senseless crisis after another. It has no purpose and no intelligent aim. They do not know the reason for intelligent life, or for the existence of the human race. They do not know where we came from or where we're going. And they do not know what life is all about. It's a complete incomprehensible mystery. Their philosophy of history is a philosophy of ignorance, frustration, and despair. In modern times, philosophy uh, this philosophy was popularized by a Frenchman named Jean-Paul Sartre, who taught that each man exists in a, in a watertight compartment as an isolated individual in a purposeless universe. And since we cannot know who we are, where we came from, or where we're going, and since we do not understand the past, we have no hope for the future, then the present throbbing moment is really all that counts. Only what we realize in this immediate present has any significance or meaning. So distant goals have no relevancy. Therefore, to sacrifice the present for the future to them is nonsensical and stupid. Therefore, out of this philosophy came the now generation generation that just could not wait. The pleasure of the moment was the only rational goal of existence. On with the dance, let joy be in the vine, let's eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. And a generation of college youth steeped in this existential philosophy of license, utility, and despair naturally erupted into the revolution area violence, arson, and plunder that's spreading death and destruction in cities, on college campuses, around the world, and in our nation. And almost overnight, society exploded into a lawlessness and crime, rioting, and murder. And in the insanity of the drug culture, this was the result of the philosophy of ignorance, concerning the past, hopelessness concerning the future. And the average historian has no clue to the meaning of history. Therefore, the, he ignores the only infallible source book, the Bible. For most people, and 
historians included, the center of history of, for any given age or period is that political entity or state which has the most populous, which is the most populous, which occupies the greatest territory, which represents supreme material resources and has the greatest military uh, power. To most of us, the stuff of history is the part played by the great empires of the past, including leading political, and political military, and financial figures that's associated with them. So men like Pharaohs, Nebuchadnezzar, Alexander the Great, Caesar, Charlemagne, and Napoleon seem to be the authentic makers of history. And these empire builders and their followers consider themselves to be the architects of faith and the molders of destiny. They believe that they were the central figure and forces of history, the prime movers of its events. But the world at large, and its historians in particular, have missed the point altogether. There's only one philosophy of history that makes any sense at all, and that is the political philosophy. The center of history is not its great empires like Egypt, Babylon, Greece, and Rome, nor modern counterparts like the United States of America, China, or Russia. To locate the center of history, one must bypass all these vast empires and the glittering names associated with them and find their way to a tiny land called the navel of the earth, the geographical center of the world. And in that tiny land is a tiny hill called Calvary, where 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus was lifted up to die. And that tiny hill in that tiny land is the center of history. Not only of this world, but of all the countless galaxies of outer space from eternity to eternity. I submit that Calvary is really the center of history. My second point of emphasis is that the church is the object and the image or, uh, uh, and goal of history. Now, this man, hanging upon that bloody cross, amidst the taunts and the jeers of Asher's by Colossians 1.17, existed before anything else, and he holds all of creation together, that is, before history itself. He is the starting point, for God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. Every event in history transpires to serve that purpose. Nothing, no matter how small, is excluded. Now catch this. The universe, including this planet, was created for one purpose, to provide a suitable habitation for the human race. The human race was created in the likeness and image of God for one purpose, to provide an eternal companion for the Son, Jesus Christ. After the fall in the Garden of Eden and the promise of redemption to the coming Messiah, the Messianic race was born and nurtured in order to bring in the Messiah. And the Messiah came for one in ten, and only one, give birth to the church, which is referred to as the Bride of Christ. The church then, the called out body of redeemed mankind, turns out to be the central object, the goal, not only of mundane history, but all that God has been doing from all realms for all eternity. And if this is true, then all history is sacred history. So history is simply his 